revelations on this album. I've had a chance to sit down and take a listen to it. It's an absolutely amazing album, so congratulations. Thank you very much. It's so nice to hear that we worked very long on this one and um, took care of every detail, and it's uh, really revolting to hear this kind of feedback. So tell us a little bit about what you wanted to achieve with this album. Was there something that you... Did you have a goal in mind when you first sat down to work on this album? Um, it was actually pretty interesting when we started working on this because we decided to self-produce this album. And therefore, uh, we needed to make sure that it's not something completely different than the first album because, you know, how fans are <laughs> when a band uh, evolves too fast. So um, we made sure that we... Uh, combine all our strengths and we had a talk about um, which genres do we like, what do we want to put into this and um, especially, I don't know, but it, it seemed like that many uh, magazines or um, yeah, communities um, expected for the first album a revolution within the symphonic metal genre and I think for the second album we kind of achieved that and we wanted to go there because we wanted to combine metalcore, gent, um, especially more uh, catchy hooks. And overall, we are very happy how it turned out and we cannot wait for the feedback. Did you feel pressure working on this album because the first album did do so well? Because the, uh, the first album was loved by so many fans, but also loved by music critics as well. Did you feel pressure going into this second album? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, this was... Um, we knew uh, the benchmark is pretty high and um, you always feel like you have to um, put this one step over the cliff with the next album. And um, I, for me, from from my personal taste, and I, th I think the whole band agrees with me that we manage this. And yeah, but let's see what the um, metal fans say. And um, yeah, the pressure was there, and we took it very serious, actually. So um, that's why um, we went in so many details with the songwriting, and um, we over. Uh, uh, Many people overlooked it before it got into the mixing session so um yeah we're pretty sure we achieved th something better i think definitely and you mentioned before about self-producing was there was there one reason why you decided to self-produce because you probably could have gone out there and and grabbed any producer that you wanted to work with was there a, a set reason why you wanted to self-produce um Yes, so the thing was with the first album, um, Melissa was the main songwriter here. And uh, during the process, we thought of, um, because our producer for the first album had very strong ideas and he was very concrete how to play them. And it was, um, uh, we had sometimes a hard time when, you, when we wanted to put in our own ideas. And uh, so it clashed there sometimes. And I mean, we are all um, educated musicians and we all knew ah, we can do something that sounds more like us and um, puts our strengths of every individual um, yeah, more in the front of the album. Uh, for me, example, with the with the Genji stuff, and Nick loves like progressive stuff, and our bass player is um, our new bass player is a crazy guy when it comes to bass synthesizers and stuff. And yeah, so yeah. So tell us a little bit about the main theme of this album. Of course, it centers around Vlad the Impaler. What made you decide that Vlad the Impaler was the theme or the character that you wanted to have this album revolve around? Actually, it was a decision by Melissa because she is the writer of the lyrics and she needs a person who is inspiring enough and whose legacy and life is inspiring enough to write a album with 12 different tracks. Um, so uh, we had, of course, this kind of concept of 
um, writing about historical characters. And for example, another um, thought we had of was Paganini, the, the violinist who had a pact with the devil. Um, but we went for Vlad the Impaler because um, of the many views you can have on his life as a monster, as a tyrant, as um, a hero. So that was the person Melissa wanted to go with. And how much did you know personally about Vlad before this, or was it a constant surprise for you whenever you started to read M Melissa's lyrics? Um, I didn't know much about him. I have to be very honest about this. I, I've been to Romania once, and I uh, it's a beautiful country, and but actually I didn't know much about him, only about the legend a bit of uh, the Dracula thing. But um, Melissa was pretty excited about reading into history and this history. So, um, yeah, she is the one uh, who knows everything now <laughs> about this topic. <laughs> yeah. And how difficult was it to work on this album? Because, of course, you were recording during a pandemic, which I know there would have been lockdowns and, and restrictions placed around you when you were trying to work on it. How difficult was it to actually sit down and write this album, but then also record it? Um, it went super easy, actually, and we were surprised by that because we all live in different places except the bass player and I. We both live here in Cologne in Germany, but um, we all uh, exchanged our ideas via Skype, via WeTransfer or Dropbox, and and there, so there was never a main writer of the songs. Of course, there has to be somebody who has initial ideas, and we exchange them over Dropbox. And then he says, uh, or I say, "Hey Nick, I need um, a more concrete drum idea," and or Melissa is just sending a hook for a chorus and says, "Yeah, have fun with the arrangement." And then Corby and I sat down and wrote something uh, over Melissa's vocals. Um, for example, for Afterlife, our latest single, um, Corby and I started writing on that one, and Melissa sat there and was like, yeah, I want this one to have a guest on it, for example, and then she started writing the lyrics of Afterlife, um, and there is a single coming up soon, uh, which we all wrote together in one five-hour Skype session. And this one turned out pretty well. And yeah, we met for the first time actually in Denmark for the mixing session when we all brought it together. So, And of course, the, the guest that you're talking there about on Afterlife is Niles. Tell us a little bit about how you all worked out what guests you wanted to work with and what it was like bringing guests in to work with you as well. Um, of course, we wanted to have something new for this second album and of course the first idea we had was having a guest or a feature and since Niels Moline was really our first choice and Melissa knows him a bit from her tours with Dynasty and Amaranth so um, when she asked him he was super hyped about this and he uh, was great having him on board it was super easy and he delivered in an instant uh, studio ready vocals and yeah we had nothing to criticize um, or to say or giving any bad feedback about this how, how it went with afterlife and um, yeah it was really nice having him especially for the video shoot uh, meeting a personal uh, um, as a fun guy <laughs> <laughs> you also worked with Elias and Jacob as well with the orchestra part of this album Tell us a little bit about working with them and what you feel they brought to the sound of this album as well. Yeah, first of all, Jacob was mixing the first album and we are all so in love with his kind of sound and mix and how he is working with us. Um, it's super easy and highly professional. Um, it's really amazing and inspiring to, to have him board. So we decided we have to go with him since um, his mix is bringing the red line between chapter one and chapter two. Because uh, if we would change the mixer, uh, <laughs> I mean, this would be maybe something completely different from uh, the, the, than the second album, uh, the first album. 
and uh, yeah, that's why we choose him, chose him again. And Elias is a friend of uh, Olaf, the guitar player of Amaranth, knows Elias, and he re recommended him to us. And sometimes in the writing process, we had already like finished orchestrations, and we wanted him to give his extra. Um, knowledge into this orchestrations and sometimes we were like we just had the band arrangement and he said okay i take care of this and that was really really nice because he just uh wrote his orchestrations and parts where the small spot and he is um, composing extra new melodies that they are gluing together so well with the band arrangement and we uh it's yeah he worked pretty fast and um, it was really nice having him board. It was not like that we had to wait for him or had like three feedback rounds and now we do this, we do that. Um, yeah, it's like people, Jacob and Elias are people that deliver instantly perfect stuff. It was really nice to have them. You mentioned earlier that this was an album where you wanted to do things a little bit differently from the first album and there's so many times on this album where there's special moments. Um, I love that heavier side that comes out on Lullaby. What was the things that you kind of wanted to experiment with with this album? Was there things in there that you really wanted to try and see how they would work on this album? Yeah, actually, um, we wanted to make sure that we have a nice synergy of different genres and put... Yeah, and break some barriers actually uh, within symphonic metal and um, just have a nice new sounding um, band arrangement. For example, there's the song Inferno, um, where you have an acoustic guitar intro, slide guitars, a gentle second verse, a breakdown, um, um, like elements that you find a lot of in metalcore, for example, like this poppy poppy sound in the in the choruses but um, always delivering heavy stuff and more having the orchestrations as a, as a red line or a cherry on the cake that leads you through the album and so we thought just let's let's write something where that's just that's just fun but also not cheeseburger music, you know, like yeah. easy to easy to write, and it and it's it's like everybody likes it a bit, and it's easy to make, but it's nothing special. So we wanted to um, have special arrangements, and on top have the orchestrations that's screwing everything together. Adrian, how do you feel now that the album is about to come out? It's a couple of weeks away now, but do you feel nervous that it's coming out, or do you feel excited that your fans are going to to get a chance to listen to this special album? I cannot wait that the fans, and hopefully, hopefully we reach some new fans with this album, um, and especially I cannot wait for the feedback by um, music magazines and uh, read into this stuff. Um, yeah, this is this album is very very personal, and of course uh, it hurts when there's some bad critique. But um, yeah, I this is yeah now October and uh, that the release date is coming closer. It feels so good, and it really has to drop finally because we're waiting so much for this. I heard this album like a thousand times already, and yeah. Well, Adrian, to finish up, what would you like to say to our listeners out there before they get a chance to sit down and take a listen to this album? Is there something special you'd like to say to them? Um, yeah. First of all, um, thank you <laughs> to all of you out there because uh, during this pandemic, it was so nice to have this constant comments and yeah, attention actually. So it really kept us going um, to deliver the second album so soon because you made us believe in this project and uh, we hope we don't let you down <laughs> with the second album and you'll like it. And um, yeah. Well,